to tell you this is Pastor Hagwood, First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, where we are exalting Christ to restore, renew, and rebuild people to serve the kingdom of God. Uh, I know First Mount Zion family, I'm not here, um, here in my home, but I'm not at uh, the actual physical location of the church. Um, we had storms this course of the past week uh, that actually knocked our lights out uh, in the sanctuary. Power's back, but our lights are not back. So uh, we're still going to have church anyhow. It doesn't matter really where we are. But on Sunday morning, we want to hear. We want to make sure that we're worshiping God in spirit and in truth, even in the midst of a pandemic. And so with that being said, I have a few things uh, this morning I want to uh, share with you. Uh, in regards to just song, and then I'm going to get into a word for today. But before we get into any of that, I want God to consecrate the aspect of this moment that we're going to be in in the midst of a virtual worship space. So I ask that you pray with me at this time as we go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Most eternal and all-wise God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for this day that we have not seen. And God, we thank you, Lord, that we're in the midst of this virtual space for worship. We ask right now in the name of Jesus that you bless it, that you allow us, God, to see your glory in it, and that someone may hear, that someone may know, that someone may come to the realization of Jesus Christ being their Lord and Savior. Thank you, Lord, for all that you continue to do. Bless First Mountain Zion, our church. Thank God for the members of our church, oh God. And God, we ask, oh God, that you continue to remain faithful, oh God, to us as you have been, oh God, as we are faithful and be are being faithful to you. We ask right now in the name of Jesus, bless this time, and Lord, let this space be for your edification and exaltation, that we can point the way to Jesus Christ, our Lord, your Son, our Savior. And no, Lord, without a shadow of doubt, that he's still saving today, and he's also still keeping us in the midst of where we are even right now. Bless us now and keep us, God, and let us see your glory, even on today. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's blessings to you. Amen. I do have a little bit of music that I wish to play. Hopefully, I've given all the right prescriptions in regards to uh, the things I need to list to make sure that the music will play um, on um, Facebook Live. So at this time, I want you to enjoy this. Amen. Um, going through some aspects. I already kicked me out of Google for a second. Uh, but I want to play a little bit of Mississippi Mass. That's what I'm feeling right now in my spirit um, for the course of Today, this is an old song with it all you know, hopefully know, um, Just Having You There by Mississippi Mass Choir. Hey, Google, play Mississippi Mass Choir, Having You There. All right, Having You There live by Mississippi Mass Choir, playing on YouTube Music.
Amen. Hey, Google, turn off. We thank God again. Having God there makes the difference. And, and I hope that you all know that. One second. Hey, Google, turn off. And so with that said, I, I hope that you realize that having God there makes the difference for all of us. And so in the midst of where we are in this virtual space, on this morning, amen. A few announcements that I just wanted to give to our family, virtual family, and definitely the Virgin Mountain Zion family um, on this week. Uh, just real quick, nothing uh, over um, over the top, but um, more things will be coming, of course, as we get into the month of August. So with that being said, we are working out the details with regards to the August, um, August back to school workshop. I got to get more details in regards to that. Uh, don't know exactly how all that will span out just yet and what we will actually do in that regard because of the pandemic. So more to come in regards to that. Not really sure how that's going to um, flow at this point, but I just want to let you all know that there's some things being worked right now for the youth department uh, in regards to that because, again, the kids are going to have some modified schedules because of the pandemic going back to school. So we want to make sure that we are in line with that, especially when it comes down to being able to hand uh, things to children, you know, uh, with regards to uh, things they'll need for school. So with regards to that, just be stay tuned in regards to that. Some more things will be coming uh, down the pipe with regards to that. Before I go any further, uh, the uh, conference call line is open at 978-990-5000. Uh, you can actually call in. The access code is 148924. Once again, 148924. And you can actually dial in. Just ask that you put your phone on mute. Make sure you put your phone on mute because we don't need to hear any feedback. Because if you start talking without your phone with your phone unmuted, we can hear you. So please go ahead and mute your phone and go from there. I see many folks that are actually out there for our virtual worship on this morning. Good morning to everyone. Um, various individuals that I see and the other folks that are still joining even right now as I speak. Uh, again, we thank God on today. Again, we would have liked to have been in the sanctuary uh, for our virtual worship. However, um, uh, because of the storms this past week, uh, we caused some um, issues with our lighting in the sanctuary, and we could not have it there. But it did not stop us from having virtual worship on today. Again, when Sundays come, we are going to have something, especially during the aspect of this pandemic. So um, I'm going to make it clear and make it clear to everyone to make sure that you all know that as long as we have this virtual space, on Sunday morning, we will have, again, study, and we will have um, a level of worship, some level of worship in the midst of uh, this pandemic that we continue to face because we're not physically, of course, in the building. So with regards to that, I want to give those announcements with regards to back to school. Um, please, ma'am, please, sir, in the midst of your giving, and I will have an auditory appeal here in a second, um, make sure that if you need to give, uh, to the church. Again, someone probably will be at the church today from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. Please go by the church and give your tithes and offerings. You may give by way of our website at firstmountzion.com. That's F-I-R-S-T-M-T-Z-I-O-N.com. Um, once you get to the homepage, hit the donate button. Once you hit the donate button, um, that'll bring you to our PayPal app. And you can give by way of debit card or credit card. That way, you can also give by way of Givelify, the Givelify app on your smartphone. It's very simple. Actually, I haven't given, uh, I haven't I've done my giving for today, so I'm actually about to do it. So with that, you can actually put this in your phone. I have a Givelify app. It's on my phone. I don't know if you'll be able to see it or not. Um, the Givelify app, um, I'm trying to get this in the camera. The Givelify app is right there. And so when I hit the Givelify app, uh, what it allows me to do is go to Givelify, which I've already put my account information and so forth, and then I can give my gifting. And so after I give my gifting, I normally have a repeat gift that I normally give to the church. I'm going to actually hit that, or you can put any amount. Once you do that, uh, I've done that. I put that amount in. It looks at my uh, debit card information. It's already there, and then it says give now. So I wish to give now, give now. So once I've done the give now, uh, waiting for it, waiting for it, waiting for it, and here comes the celebration. Boom, right there. There it is. And so I've actually given to uh, First Mount Zion. Thank you, Elbert LaShawn Hagwood, for your gift to First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, which you can actually see 
uh, there at the bottom. So with regards to that, I've already given. You see how quick that was? You can go and giveify yourself and actually be able to give uh, according to what the Lord has given you. That simple. See, it didn't take no more than 10 seconds to actually do that. So um, you can give by way of Giveify and um, actually go through and set that up on your phone. And that's how quick you can give. And you can do it at any time. You can do it any time during the week uh, or what have you. You can give via Giveify. Um, I'm using it as my mode of giving now uh, rather than writing out checks sometimes because, again, it just, it's just easier. So it allows me to go ahead and give and keep on walking and keep on moving to give to my church, uh, the church in which I serve as the pastor. So with regards to that, uh, you can give by way of uh, that. Again, 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. today, you can mail your uh, gifts to the church at 1515 Remount Road, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28208. You can actually give that way. Uh, just mail them to the church. We'll get them. Or if you need to contact the church at 704-332-8335, you can do so. You can actually contact the church. And um, if no one's at the church, just leave a message. We'll get back in contact with you. If you're in the Charlotte area, we can come and actually pick up your tithes and offerings. And so, uh, again, we'll get someone to do that from either our trustee ministry or from our deacons ministry that will come by and actually pick up your tithes and offerings at your home location in the local area of Charlotte, North Carolina. So with that said, I want to give an offertory appeal at this time. Uh, during this time, I pray that you give in some way. If you're giving during the course of the week, we thank you. But uh, if you haven't, I ask that you do so at this time, that you um, give in your spirit. Whatever God is telling you in regards to the aspect of giving, we be obedient to the aspect of giving our tithes and offerings to the Lord because it is important for the upbuilding of the kingdom of God and the things that we do in ministry. Ministry still goes forward in the midst of a pandemic. And because of that, we must be vigilant in regards to making sure that we give uh, appropriately, cheerfully, and regularly to the place that we are fed spiritually each and every week, each and every day, the place that we call our church home. Amen. So with that being said, I want to give a word of prayer. I'm going to put it in a song. And when I come back, we're going to have the word of God, uh, the reading of scripture. Then I'll have another song, and then we'll have the preach word of God. Let us pray at this time. Most gracious Father, we ask right now in the name of Jesus, O oh God, that, Lord, you bless the giving of the saints, O oh Lord, that will be given uh, to various mediums, O oh God, uh, to the kingdom of God, even right now, uh, by way of First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We ask that you bless them, O oh God, bless those who give, bless those who have a heart to give, but may not have it at this time. Allow their spirit to understand, Lord, that in giving, truly giving is a part of worship. It's part of the worship experience. And so we ask right now, Lord, that you bless and keep and allow, God, your glory to shine over everyone, oh God, uh, uh, and, and even in the place where folks are giving. Make, folks are making their petitions even right now, God, to you. And God, work with them by way of the Holy Spirit in regards to their giving and their giving to the ministry of Jesus Christ by way of First Mountain Zion Missionary Baptist Church. We thank you, Father, for all that you continue to do. We do all of this, Lord in order to combat the ills and the wiles of the devil, because he is so uh, ravenous, oh God, like a lion, and like a ravenous wolf. But at the same time, God, you are powerful, more than powerful, Lord, to give us the power in order to defeat him on each and every occasion, occasion that he steps up. So we ask right now, Lord, that you give us what we need, Lord, in the midst of where we are, so that, Lord, we can continue to do the ministry of Jesus Christ and the point folks to the way, the truth, and the life of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Lord, our Savior, your Son, in whose name we pray and ask all. Amen. At this time, I'm going to play another song for you. Amen. Uh, one that I'm actually working with uh, musicians on. Hopefully we can actually have and sing during our uh, virtual worship time. This is a song that's by the Reverend Timothy Wright. Uh, it is called, it's one of my favorites, I love the song, um, uh, it's called I've Been Born Again, and I'm going to uh, play this at this time. Hey Google, play I've Been Born by Timothy Wright. All right, I've Been Born Again by Reverend Timothy Wright, playing on YouTube Music. North Carolina. I can't say that. I was 
born right here in Brooklyn, New York. Fulton Street, between Clawson and Grand. And when I was a little boy coming up, on one side of Fulton Street was about three or four bars. And on that same side was the Fairhaven Funeral Chapel. But on the other side of Fulton Street was about four or five churches all lined up together. And one of those churches was the St. John Five Baptized Church. And on a Friday night, if you caught the A train, got off at Franklin Avenue, and walked down Fulton Street, you could hear the saints praising the Lord way off in the distance. And if you went inside of St. John, you see Deacon Middleton on the drum. You see Papa Gray on his guitar. something like this. I'm a true boy, child of God. Nothing but grace from the safety of this fall. I sing and shout when I praise the Lord. I can live like this.
Amen. We thank God for that election. Uh, I've been born. Hey, Google, turn off. And I, I hope that everyone enjoyed that selection. Uh, saved and sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I've been born again. I've been born again. We thank God again for all that we are seeing and heard up until this point in the midst of this virtual worship space. Amen. The word of God now, amen, it will be read uh, uh, at this time before we go into our sermon on today. Again, the word of God, by the way, the new international version of God's word. And this is what it says, amen, out of the gospel of Luke, the gospel of Luke chapter 13, the gospel of Luke chapter 13. And I'm reading here verses 10 to verse 17. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. And it reads this way from the New International Version of God's Word. It says, On a Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues, and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, Woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her, and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. And the Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated. But the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his holy word and sanctify it to the deepest roots of our heart. Amen. At this time, I'm going to give another selection. Amen. I told you I was on a little Mississippi mass kick today. Amen. I'll play this, play this song, uh, which is a favorite of mine. It still is even to this day. Um, um, uh, the late Frank Williams, amen, with Mississippi Mass, amen, near the cross, amen, at this time. When I come back, we will have the preach word of God. Hey, Google, play, hey, Google. Okay, hey, right. by E-G-O-V-E-R-T. Hey, Google, play Mississippi Mass Choir near the cross. Near the Cross by Mississippi Mass Choir, sure, playing on YouTube Music.
Amen. 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 We thank God. Hey, Google, turn off. Amen. We thank God on today. Amen. What we heard again, sometimes being able to take an old hymn and to contemporize it to some degree um, allows us to be still allows us to see um, the rootage of a lot of these we come from. But I just love that song, Mississippi Mass, again, near the cross, near the cross, be my glory forever till my raptured soul shall find rest beyond the river. And so with that being said, a scripture's been read out of Luke, the Gospel of Luke chapter 13, verses 10 through 17. And I want to read for an emphasis or give a sermonic exposition on this morning. Um, the title of this sermon, again, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, let me read this passage of scripture just once more. I want to read one piece of it um, that's here. And so with this, verse 13, verse 15 of chapter 13, chapter 13, verse 15 of the Gospel of Luke, the Lord answered him, you hypocrites, doesn't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom, whom Satan has kept bound for 18 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from what bound her. And when he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. And so with that being said, let us pray very quickly. Lord, we pray right now that this word goes in faith, that ears may hear, the hearts will respond to what your word instructs us in order to be obedient to and what we should walk in. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For the time that is ours on uh, this morning, amen, I want to bring as a subject on this morning, make sure our lighting is good, bring for a subject on this morning, a remedy for hunchback paralysis. A remedy for hunchback paralysis. Again, a remedy for hunchback paralysis. Virtual church, like many of us this morning, and many of you, before the pandemic, and even right now, I still love to go out to eat at a variety of formal dining establishments, again, with my wife and children. One of the restaurants that my family loves to go dine in from time to time is Olive Garden. Some of you this morning have been to Olive Garden. But for those who have not, allow me to describe your initial open-the-door experience once you open the door to the restaurant. Once you get in, there is a host, a hostess, behind a podium that you must greet and address. His or her sole purpose is to take your name, put your name on a list, tell you how long the wait will be before you are seated, and hand you a device that will alert you as to when the seating for your party is available. You now have, you have now given your name to the host or hostess, and they in return have given you the alerting device. Now the job of the host or hostess is to manage the busyness of the vestibule crowd because there are several other people just like yourself who have managed to go through the same routine that you have just experienced. These same people went to the podium, gave their name to the host or hostess, were told how long they would probably have to wait until they were seated, and were handed that same alerting device to tell them when the seating for their party was available. And again, virtual church, the job of this host or hostess is to manage the busyness of the vestibule area and to ensure that everyone that he or she handed that device to is seated on or before the time frame they, that they estimated when they handed you that vibrating device. Well, maybe the host tells you it will be 
it would take between 30 and 45 minutes for you to be seated. So you patiently wait until that alerting device begins to vibrate. You are waiting for 15 minutes and there is still no vibration. You continue to wait for just past the place just past the place of 30 minutes and there is still no vibration. You are now getting antsy because 45 minutes of wait time is creeping up in the next four to five minutes and these people at Olive Garden still have not vibrated your device and your patience is beginning to wane thin. It is now 47 minutes and you are now at the point that your patience has hit empty and is now telling you to go to Carabas instead or some other restaurant because your stomach has been on empty and has collaborated with your patience level but wants to just stop by Wendy's and get a single burger with cheese, no onions, and call it a night. And your feet are now walking back to the host podium with the intention of just giving the device back and just when you were ready to throw in the towel on bottom of the salad, breadsticks, chicken piccata with angel hair pasta, your device begins to vibrate. Now the question is, will your frustration make you leave behind the taste you were waiting for or will you go and get what you came for by answering the call of the vibration? And now, church, let me change the demographic just a little as we funnel this introduction into the text that I read this morning. We have a woman who happens to be in a synagogue, or in the church, if you will, praising and giving homage to God for a very long time. The assumption is that this woman has been a faithful member of the church for a very long time. However, church, the problem she has is that physically she has been crippled by a demonic spirit that has caused her back to give out to the point where she could not stand straight and upright. For 18 years, let me repeat that, for 18 years she had been in this condition, bent over and could not straighten up. She had what I would like to call hunchback paralysis. And I am 100% positive on this morning that no one in this virtual space wants to be in that type of condition. Unlike many of the healings Jesus had performed, this one was different. In most of his healings, the person needing the healing was seeking out Jesus in order to be healed. But in this case, Jesus calls this woman out in the synagogue and sets her free from this hunchback paralysis. In virtual church in First Mount Zion, as much as I would like to focus on this woman's healing this morning, I would like it, uh, I think it would be a disservice to the greater message that Jesus wants us to comprehend on this morning. Jesus healed this woman from her physical hunchback paralysis. And God and God be praised for that miracle. However, Jesus wants to know this morning why we continue to choose to walk in spiritual hunchback paralysis. What are you talking about, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked. My spiritual backbone, my spiritual walk, my spiritual relationship, uh, relationship is just fine. If, 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 let, me, let, let, me, let, me, let me help you here. If you think that's the case, then please go through this checklist. If you are believing in the worldly distortion of biblically-based doctrine, then it sounds like you could be bent out of shape. If you think that getting to heaven is an automatic for you based on your social economic status and not your soul salvation status, then the diagnosis is clear, my friend. You are bent out of shape. If you think performing works gets your righteousness in Jesus, or performing works gets you righteousness in Jesus, then it sounds like you could be bent out of shape. If your character tries to embody the combination of a churchgoer with liquor house tendencies, then you, my friend, are bent out of shape. And if your heart desires your neighbor's car, your neighbor's husband, 
your neighbor's wife, your neighbor's neighborhood, your neighbor's house, and anything your neighbor has instead of seeking first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these other things will be added unto you, then you are truly bent out of shape. And church, this is what God wants. He wants us to be honest with ourselves. Stop playing church. Let me say that again. Stop playing church. Look at certain aspects of our lives and confess that we are bent out of shape. Since some of us this morning have now confessed in our hearts that we are somewhat bent out of shape, then we can now address the question I believe Jesus wants us to deal with on this morning. And that is, how do we get straightened from hunchback paralysis? Again, how do we get straightened from hunchback paralysis? Well, church, my first point this morning into the question of how do we get straightened from hunchback paralysis is by dealing with the heart that is bent out of shape. By dealing with a heart that is bent out of shape. We can gather directly from the text the exact reason why this woman's back was physically out of shape. However, scripture does not tell us where she was in her spiritual state. And I think it is safe to say that this woman may have had a downtrodden spirit, a rent spiritual countenance, and a toe up from the floor of disposition because of the physical position of her back, been, uh, her back being bent over. And I'm here to tell you on this morning, virtual church, there are many sitting right here in virtual worship on this morning that are bent over because life has dealt a blow that we feel, feel like we cannot straighten our backs from. The reality is that the enemy may have targeted us even when we have not done anything wrong or we were swayed and coaxed by Satan to sin against the commands and decrees of Jesus Christ our Lord. Whatever the circumstance and whatever the issues may have been that left us with our backs bent out of shape, the target area of the attack is usually the same. When our hearts are in an infirm state, Regardless if we have or have not done anything to be placed there, God has to perform some spiritual surgery to get our hearts right so that we can stand up and straighten up so that we can get back on course with his design and purpose for our lives. I'm talking about hearts that have been destroyed and displaced. I am talking about hearts that are crooked and out of order. I'm talking about hearts that have a desire to be bent over and out of shape because they just want to focus on the things below and not the things above. I'm talking about hearts, hearts that choose to focus on the things that keep you on track, leading to hell rather than focusing on the things that will lead you closer to the presence of God. I'm talking about hearts, hearts that need consolation because an infirm spirit has set uh, solitary confinement to the freedom you, ha you can have in Jesus Christ. I'm talking about hearts, church, hearts that need consolation because they are living in the shadows of grief and fear. I am talking about hearts, hearts that need consoling because they are cast down, troubled, and greatly bowed down. And for those whose hearts are bent out of shape because you just choose to be, uh, be opposed to God's commands and be bent, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 7 and 13, man cannot straighten what God has decided to make crooked. But God can straighten anything that the sin of man has made crooked. And for those whose hearts are bent out of shape because you are being attacked by the wiles of the devil, the Bible says in, in Psalm 38 and 6, those that are bowed down and prostrate, born all the time, God adopts them and looses them of their infirmity. Virtual church, give God praise 
when crooked hearts, the place displaced hearts, out of order hearts, are made to be straightened up. My second point this morning. Again, church, virtual church, how do we get straightened from hunchback paralysis? Well, we get straightened by hunchback paralysis by confirming the truth of God's word that we have bent out of shape. By confirming the truth of God's word that we have bent out of shape. Virtual church, the text says, that the leader of the synagogue, i.e. the leader of the church, became indignant because Jesus performed this miracle on the Sabbath. Frankly, First Mount Zion and virtual church, many of the synagogue leaders, the Pharisees and Sadducees, just did not like Jesus. Church, let us just be real about it on this morning. Their hearts were bent out of shape. But because Jesus shuts up these teachers of the law once again by making it plain as he did in the gospel of Matthew chapter 12 verse 8. For the son of man is Lord of the Sabbath. The argument that Jesus gives to the church leaders is this. If you can take out your own oxen and donkey on the Sabbath so they can get a drink of water then why is it that this woman, who is a daughter of Abraham and has been stricken by Satan for 18 years with this bent over infirmity, cannot be set free on the Sabbath? And I came by here on this morning to tell, to tell you that God made Sunday for man and not man for Sunday. We have to state the truth about God's word. Because there are leaders, naysayers, and even preachers and pastors that have bent God's word out of shape. And it is only a spirit that is bent out of shape that would have the audacity, the gall, and even the gumption to say that God cannot heal, that God cannot deliver, that God cannot save, that God cannot set free. That God cannot love. That God cannot reconstruct. <laughs> that God cannot witness. <laughs> and God cannot do what he does on the day that he created. That he created. <laughs> God's not tied down <laughs> by the Sabbath. <laughs> because he was the one who created the Sabbath. <laughs> and ordained it so that means he can he cannot be held down by it. <laughs> church, <laughs> I'm almost done. <laughs> but church, my time is just about up. <laughs> but I want to thank you for, Lord, for yours. <laughs> but before I go <laughs> on this morning, <laughs> I want to leave you with this note <laughs> from Psalm 146, <laughs> verse 8. The Lord raises those who are bowed down. And church, I don't know where you are this morning. You may be bowed down in coronavirus. You may be bowed down in unemployment. You may be bowed down in the midst of some type of ailment, disease, or infirmity. But I'm here to tell you, it doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter if it's Sunday, whether it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. It doesn't matter if it's Saturday, and it so don't matter if it's Sunday morning. Whatever day God wants to heal you, whatever day God wants to deliver you, Whatever day God wants to give you the increase, when God's will says it's time, then it's time. Don't worry about your head being bowed down. If your pants bowed down, just keep looking up to the hills from which cometh your help. Your help, my help, the world's help. Comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Don't worry about your head being bowed down. Because at some point, God can lift it up. And when you lift your head up, you can straighten up, straighten up to be a better Christian, straighten up to be a better follower, 
Straighten up to be a better neighbor. Straighten up to be a better soldier. Straighten up to be just better. Because when God gives you the remedy for your hunchback paralysis, God will expose the strength of what he can do. Even the church can't hold you back. When God is ready, when God is ready, God will heal you in due time. God's blessings to you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Straighten up. Because God will straighten you up. God is doing the work. He's reworking some things in the midst of the coronavirus and the pandemic. And if you were in Sunday school this morning, I told you all, all of these things are transpiring, at least I believe partly, because God is doing a new thing. And he's beginning to see who is really the church. And so with that, continue to be faithful to God. Because even in the pandemic, he's continued to be faithful to us. God's blessings to you. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. At this time, I want to play a last song uh, before going to benediction, uh, benediction on today. But again, we love you in the Lord. Continue to push forward. And wherever your heart and your disposition may be downtrodden, where it may be bowed down, know that God can straighten you up. Because it's the Lord who straightens up and raises those who are bowed down. God's blessings to you. God, let this word go in faith as it travels the airways. May it sanctify folks and may it help folks heart to heart and breast to breast. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you want to know more about the saving power of Jesus Christ, our Lord, you can email us at info, I-N-F-O, at firstmountzion, F-I-R-S-T-M-T-Z-I-O-N dot com. And we will tell you about the salvation power of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Christ is still saving today, and we can share Jesus Christ with you. Amen. Even at this moment and at this time. I'm going to play one last song, and I'm going to come back for a last word, final word, a good word of benediction. God's blessings to you. Take care. Hey, Google, play Mississippi Mass Choir, Your Grace and Mercy. Okay, Your Grace and Mercy by Mississippi Mass Choir. Here it is on YouTube Music.
a sinner like me to save the world. Salvation is free. today amen truly god's grace and mercy continues to bring us through uh thank god for that word on today again remedy for hunchback paralysis i pray that it, it uh, gives you food for your soul during the course of this week amen i'm going to scroll through very quickly um uh just through uh, some of the um um the the posts that were out here and uh, y'all forgive me i'm kind of going through the motions of uh of um Facebook, uh, Facebook uh, Live, amen. Just thank everyone for their comments. Just see a whole lot of folks that are out there. Um, good to see Will Clark, amen. Um, um, up in Martinsville, Virginia, amen. Thank you for uh, what you continue to uh, continue to support our ministry here in Charlotte, amen. And blessings to you and your family, man, uh, up in Martinsville um, and up around the Piedmont Tri area, of course, of North Carolina, amen. Um, me and Will grew up together in Eden. And, um, amen, grew up in the same church, Sunday Home Baptist Church, Eden, North Carolina. We thank God uh, for he and his wife and, amen, for uh, all of them and all his family and everyone from First Mount Zion and everybody came and joined us on today. Amen. It's time for a good word, amen, which we call benediction, and we'll get it at this time. Amen. It will be a uh, calling post, First Mount Zion members, on the course of this week, early this week. Um, I want to make sure I call a meeting for pastors and deacons because we did this for July but we definitely need to pick things back up um, and make sure we get things uh, for the latter half of the year uh, uh, set and so forth. 
even in the midst of where we are in this pandemic. So uh, you'll definitely be hearing me er uh, earlier, uh, sooner than later, with regards to um, um, calling posts. Also, if you have not given, amen, make sure you give uh, the aspects of your tithes and offerings via our various mediums, being able to give. Someone will be at the church from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. today, amen. You can still give by a PayPal, Giveify, amen, mail it to the church, um, or call the church and have someone actually send it. Uh, send, come your way to actually come and get your tithes and offerings if you need them picked up if you live here locally in the Charlotte area. God's blessings to you again. We thank God for you. And uh, again, we'll be back next week. Prayerfully, we'll be back, amen, um, doing virtual live, uh, virtual worship, Facebook live um, within our sanctuary. Uh, again, uh, we just had some problems with the lights because of the recent storms this week. And we just thank God that uh, could have been much worse, amen, but there's something that can be fixed. And uh, we we'll hope that we'll get that taken care of in the course of this week. God's blessing to you. Remember, we are First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, exalting Christ to restore, renew, and rebuild people to serve the kingdom of God. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this word, O oh Lord, the remedy for hunchback paralysis. We ask God that you bless us and keep us during the course of this week and allow us, God, to continue to see your glory. Oh God, bless our world. Bless our nation, O oh God. Bless our states that we live in, O oh God. And God, help us, O oh God, that uh, you will continue to stretch forth your hand over the entire globe, oh God, in order to let folks know, oh Lord, that you are God, and truly besides you, there is no one else. Thank you, Lord, for all that you continue to do. Bless our First Mount Zion family. Keep them in your stead, oh God. Let them continue, Lord, to seek justice, mercy, and faithfulness, as you, Lord, have always been faithful. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless into that day with exceeding great joy. To the only wise God, be power, dominion, glory, and honor forever and forever. And the people of God said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Remember, we are First Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church again, exalting Christ to restore, renew, and rebuild people to serve the kingdom of God. God's blessings to you. Take care. Be blessed on the course of this week. I love you in the Lord, and there is nothing, absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing that you can do about that. Amen. We love you in the Lord. Take care. Be blessed during the course of this week. Amen. Amen. Bless you.